Welcome back, Tom. I Thanks know it's been much. a busy time for you for Christmas. It's but been amazing. And it's busy. You're back in the restaurant tonight as well. Back in the restaurant tonight, yeah. I might even get there for the second half of lunch service. You never know. Well, congratulations and everything, because this is a dish that you, you kind of made up. It's not on the menu, but this is something that you made up. No, depending on how well we do it today, it may well go on the menu. Right, OK. <laughs> but it went OK in rehearsal, so what's the name of it then? OK, it is a blowtorch mackerel yep. with blini pancakes and warm pickled beetroot. Sounds good to me. You want me to get this, uh, this you dressing You get going with the dressing, and I'm going to warm some milk up. So what's the dressing in there? What am I putting in you here? You are putting some red wine vinegar yep. and some uh, red currant jelly. Yep. And basically, it's about equal parts of each, and we're just going to reduce that down, and we're going to mix it in with some mustard. Right. OK, so I'm going to put the blini mix together. Which now, all you're is, doing is warming the milk. It's not hot, is it? I'm just it? warming the milk, and I'm yep. not going to heat it up too much, otherwise it'll kill the fresh yeast, which is going yep. in there. So I have uh, plain flour, buckwheat flour, I've just dropped those cloves in there as well. So. Ah, lovely. And a little bit of sugar. Yep. I'm going to warm the milk. And I'm going to crack a couple of eggs. Yeah. Okay, so separate them to whites and yolks. Now, I mentioned you've been extremely busy. Yes. And the fact that you've got two missing stars, do you think that's the reason for it? Has it suddenly propelled you into a different place? Yeah, you know, it's made a big, big difference. To, I think... The, the interest from overseas has been massive. The right. idea that um, a pub in this country can win two Michelin stars is, you know, it's fantastic. We've got a reputation in Great Britain of having awful food, and I think something that you associate with Great Britain is pubs, isn't it? So, obviously, the, the interest from America, like, you know, New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and, yeah. and Germany and France and Asia as well, the interest in the pub has been absolutely fantastic. So. At the minute, we're riding a bit of a wave, and the chefs are running around like with their hands in the air and yes. screaming all day long. But, but apart you, from that, do you think it's because a lot of people think with it, look at the Michelin, they think of tablecloths and everything else. Times have changed, haven't they? Times have massively changed. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a three star restaurant in New York called Brooklyn Fair that's actually during the day is a delicatessen, and at night time, I think it's an 18 covers people sitting at the bar, and it's three Michelin stars. Right. So yeah, I think the Michelin Guide has changed with the way that people's with food and people's perception, which is, you know, it's fantastic. You yeah. know, we're in a, a modern day, and why can't you? We have had two mission stars in a pub. Exactly, why not? Keeps you busy anyway. So what, what, what about busy. our blinis? What's this then? So okay, so I'm whisking up egg whites. I've just warmed the milk, and that's going to help activate the yeast. So we've got the flour and the eggs, and I'm just going to mix this together and then slowly put in the egg white. So make it a bit of a batter pancake mix almost. So you almost don't have to worry about the lumps in this, do you? No, absolutely really not. And then the semi-whipped up egg white. And we'll just mix that in together. And this yep. is going to make this will make loads of pancakes. So I've got some creme fraiche here. We're just literally whipping it back up again. Yeah, yep. literally just thickening it up through the whisking. Okay, so with the yeast in that, nice and warm, we're going to leave it to uh, to rest to to activate, and you end up with something like this. It's just beginning to bubble up. Yeah. And we're going to get some oil in a pan. It's a lot easier with electric whisk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oil in a pan. You right there, chef? It's two weeks holiday doing nothing. That's what's done. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, right. Your arm's gone tired. Pass it along the line. We could all have a go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's lovely aerated batter. Yeah, the creme fraiche is aerated as well. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. It's going to go in a pad. <laughs> so what's next for you then? Are you going to concentrate 2012 with this, the pub? No, oh, absolutely. You know, I've got no, no major plans. I've, you know, I've, for me, winning two stars has been what, such an amazing achievement. Just not just for everybody who works there, and, and, but for, for the pub and Great Britain. And, you know, it's something that we just want to continue and maintain. So there's no major plans. I've got... Um, I've been asked, fortunately, to go out to Singapore and do represent Great Britain doing um, cooking for the Singapore Air Show, which is uh, 500 guests during Valentine's week, so it's, uh, which would be a pretty amazing experience. And that's only come about, I think, because of winning two stars. But apart from that, I've got no other plans apart from staying in my kitchen and making sure that come the next Michelin Guide, it still has two stars. That sounds good to me. Yeah. Right, that's your little dressing. Yep. So that's your... Little reduction there, and the clove's gone in there. Yeah. 
pass it off and just leave that to one side. That's it. So it's got a nice little clovey hit going through it. And it's got the sweetness and the sharpness. Now tell us about fillet in this uh, mackerel. There. Mackerel, beautiful fresh mackerel. Basically, come down either side of the uh, backbone. You're taking the fillets off. And then we're good. Yeah, right, Remember, if you lads your question the show, they can call this uh, number and ask the chefs. That's 0876 41 41 41. Calls cost 10 p a minute from BT Limelight. Mobiles and other networks may vary. And a few of you put your questions through us live a little later on. Don't forget, you find Tom's recipe along with all the other studio recipes from today's show at bbc.cuddycake forward slash Saturday Kitchen. Make sure when you do do the recipe, you buy thick creme fresh. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so these pancakes are just gently, gently, slowly cooking the oh, puffed up lovely. No. Don't so get it on your fingers. In the, you're cooking those in oil, yeah? Yeah, just in a little bit of oil. And they're puffing up nicely that you can see them. They're gonna just slowly cook they're nice aerated like a like a bit of a cushion or a pillow or something like that. Right. V bone in the mackerel. Yeah. That's and the V cut in the centre keeps the bones out, yeah? That's it, and just cutting them out. And then taking the fillets, skin on, and we're going to cook them with a blowtorch. I'm here. With the blowtorch, <laughs> armed and dangerous. See ya, yeah. So where's this idea come from then? It, well, I tell you what, it was actually... a little bit Japanese sort of It thing. is exactly where I saw it. I saw somebody do it, uh, blowtorch some nigiri sushi in a, in, a, in, a, in a sushi bar in Cyprus, of all places. Right. <laughs> and I thought, what an amazing idea. What a nice way of cooking... Such a beautiful, fresh piece of fish. I'll pinch that and show James Martin it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Straight on there. A little bit of oil. Straight on there. A little bit of oil. Bit of salt. Bit of salt. And we'll get cooking with those. Right. That's there. And you're going to finish off this dressing thing I will thing finish there. off that dressing So those, there. those are cooked, aren't they, those little blinis? These little blinis are almost there. Just a little bit longer. Okay, so the dressing, I'm going to add to that. Right there, Chef. Yeah, I feel great. We're going to add to that a good dollop of Dijon mustard. Don't eat your eye when you're holding a blowtorch. No. And this, you want it sort of, it's almost half cooked then, I take it. It doesn't matter. It's pretty much, if it's still a little bit raw in the middle, for me, kind of like a, a sushi dish, it's fine. As long as the mackerel is beautiful and fresh, you know, that, that works for me, that's fantastic. Yeah. So we're just trying to get that almost barbecue flavour that's coming through, that char-grilled flavour that a lot of people are looking for in the cooking at the minute. But yeah, they buy a barbecue normally, don't they, really? Yeah, they do. I couldn't afford a barbecue, <laughs> so I thought I'd go with a blowtorch. And, uh, it is a quick way of doing it, though. Isn't it's it? beautiful, isn't it? It's fantastic. Yeah. Don't even need a stove, look. Right, okay, so this dressing, it's just had the mustard put through it, and then we're going to yeah. bind beetroot with it so we've got this nice warm pickled beetroot we've got the creme fraiche that you've chopped up and I'm going to chop up some chives and do a few mm -hmm. shallot rings mm -hmm. any pancakes come out yeah and we're ready to plate up when you are season them with a bit of salt if you could do me some shallot rings chef that'd be right, amazing yeah. chop some chives might as well I've done everything else yeah I know it's in me I love this being a two-star head chef. <laughs> <laughs> you just get on with it, chef. Right. So, a little bit of shallot rings. This is where you get the mixture of the blinis and everything else, really, don't you? Classic compliment. Absolutely. It's where you get the, you know, it's that caviar, which we're going to serve with it, but not the super posh caviar. We're going to serve some of this avruga caviar, which yeah. is like a, from Herring Row. I'll leave you to get that out. There we'll we go. A little bit of this on here. A little dollop of that. Yeah. And that you've mixed together with a bit of mustard in there as well. Yep, so it's got a nice bit of spice. Big splash of the caviar because it's lovely, but it's not massively expensive. Piece of that. Good dollop of the creme fraiche. And then you've got your fish. And then we have the blowtorch fish. So remind us what that is again. That is blowtorch mackerel with blini pancakes and warm pickled beetroot. That he did all by himself. <laughs> 
This week I'm in the grounds of Knoll in Sevenoaks, and as beautiful as it is here, it's time for me to hit the high street and find some lovely wines to go with this morning's recipes. I have to be honest and say that my first thought when I saw Tom's recipe was vodka, and that naturally led me on to considering a very chilled, bone-dry white, such as this Chablis. But the spicy, sweet and sour beetroot in Tom's dish is a key element when it comes to choosing a wine. And it means we need something much fruitier and more aromatic. And so I've chosen the Peter Lehman Eden Valley Riesling from Australia, which is crisp and refreshing, but also very fruity and flavoursome. Whereas German Riesling tends to be light and flowery with a touch of sweetness, New World Rieslings produced in countries such as Chile, New Zealand and Australia are usually drier and more citric and they go really well with dishes like Tom's. Mmm, that's so fresh and limey. And when you taste it, although it's dry, it's full of intense fruit flavours that will complement the beetroot as well as offsetting that salty caviar and the oniony chives and shallots. It's also got beautiful crisp acidity to balance the creme fraiche and the blinis and then to pick up on that blow-torched mackerel. Tom, your dish is a new favourite in our household and I think we'll be stocking up on plenty of this to drink with it.